Hi there. In this short topic video, we're going to take a look at the concept of income elasticity of demand. Now, what would happen to what you spend your money on, your demand for products and services, if your income significantly increased, let's say by 50%? What would you spend more on? What would you spend less on? Would you start to switch from one product to another, perhaps transfer from one brand to another? That's the kind of question that marketers need to consider when they are thinking about the income elasticity of demand for their products and services. You may have heard of this concept already of elasticity. You may have come across it in the context of price elasticity. And what we're doing with income is simply looking at the responsiveness of demand to a different variable, in this case, incomes. So income elasticity of demand looks at the responsiveness of demand to a change in incomes. So it measures the extent to which quantity demanded changes in response to a change in income. So you can see from that, from that definition, that we are going to be looking at percentage changes again in the same way that we do when we look at price elasticity. Income elasticity of demand is usually shortened to IED and it's calculated by comparing two percentage changes. We look at the percentage change in quantity demanded and we divide that by the percentage change in income. The percentage change in quantity demanded is divided by the percentage change in income to give us the income elasticity number. Let's look at a simple example here. Let's imagine a product, product X, and uh, where incomes in the economy are £20,000 on average, we find that 10 million units of product X are demanded by the market. So that's our starting point. Now let's see what happens to demand for product X as incomes rise. And in this case, we see that incomes have risen from 20,000 to 22,000 pounds, and there has been an increase in the demand for product X from 10 million to 12 million units. Now, if you want, pause the, uh, the video here and have a go at calculating the percentage changes in demand and income after having calculated the change in demand. Uh, when you're ready, start it again and I'll go through the calculations. So let's have a look. Well, first of all, we look at the percentage change in demand and in this case, it's gone up by 2 million units from 10 to 12. Uh, to calculate the percentage change in demand, we divide the change, which is 2 million, by the original figure, which was 10 million. That's 2 over 10 times by 100 gives you a percentage change, an increase in demand of 20%. Let's have a look at the change in income. Incomes have risen from 20,000 to 22,000. That's an increase of 2,000. 2,000 divided by the original income of 20,000. That means a percentage increase of 10% in incomes. So we can see from that, that demand has risen by 20% after incomes rose by 10%. To calculate income elasticity, we simply divide the percentage change in quantity demanded by the percentage change in income. That's 20 divided by 10 gives you an income elasticity of two. Hopefully you can see how we calculate that. Now, what does this mean? Well, with income elasticity, we tend to make a, a distinction between what are known as luxury products and necessities. Luxury products uh, are where the income elasticity is more than one. In other words, when incomes rise by a certain percentage, demand for these products, these so-called luxuries, rises by more than the change in incomes. So as incomes grow, proportionately more of that income is spent on these luxury products. Conversely, where income elasticity is less than one, but importantly, more than zero, as income grows, demand rises, but not by as much as the percentage change in income. So as income grows, proportionately less is spent on necessities. Demand for them still grows, but not by as much as the percentage change. Now, what do we mean by these luxuries and necessities? Well, luxuries might include things like uh, branded goods, branded products. As your income rises, you're more able to afford branded products. And maybe you spend proportionately more of the extra money in your pocket on those products. As the amount in your pocket or your wallet or purse increases, 
you're going to spend proportionately less on these necessities, the things that you had to buy in the first place, but you're not going to buy much more of. So milk, maybe discounted or own label products. Most normal products see an increase in demand when there is an increase in income. The only distinction is how much the increase is. So a rise in income will result in a rise in, in demand. And similarly, if incomes start falling, as of course happens in some circumstances, particularly during a recession, we see there is a fall in demand for products. And the extent to which this happens is known as the income elasticity. There is one product there, one type of product, just to remember, which is a thing called an inferior good. This is quite an unusual one, but if you think about it, it makes sense. An inferior good has can have a negative income elasticity. In other words, as incomes rise, demand actually starts to fall. And uh, conversely, as incomes fall, demand can start to rise. And we see this in the case of what's known as inferior goods. Uh, and the reason for this is that they are products where consumers will switch either into them if their incomes are falling or definitely switch out of them as their incomes are rising. And we've seen this, haven't we, with the rise of the discount retailers during a recession. A significant switch to value for money products, which saw their demand rise when incomes were falling. And of course, in good times, maybe demand for those products is not as quite as strong. It starts to fall. That's been a brief introduction to and an explanation of the concept of income elasticity of demand.